Hello and welcome to the Fall 2019 photo work, Photoshop Workshop here in Studio Co. Today I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to create the poster you see here. So the first thing you want to, go to do is go to File, Open, Navigate to the Photoshop Workshop folder, Open the Images folder, and choose Red Rocks. After you have that open, the first thing you want to, <clears throat> you're going to want to do is unlock your background, rename your layer to Red Rocks, and then select your crop tool. After you have your crop tool selected, you will adjust it so that you have a vertical orientation. Why? Oh, delete these aspect ratios up here so it doesn't keep it the same. Now we should be able to free transform our crop. There we go. If you have a good area selected, you can either hit enter or click the little check mark up here. And then the next step will be to duplicate the layer. In order to do that, you will just right click on your image and select duplicate layer. With your copy selected, click on your blending options right here, it should say normal, and then choose either overlay or soft light. And you can see how those two simple steps, you've already made some major color and contrast corrections. So now that's that that's done, go ahead and right click on your new layer and merge it down so that you're back to a single layer. Alright, so as you can see, especially when I zoom in here, this image is a bit blurry, a bit pixelated, um, and one easy way to get rid of some of that pixelation, especially where it's super noticeable, as is the case with the edges around the rocks, you can go to your blur tool, adjust your size with your brackets, and then just click and drag along that border until the pixelation disappears. and you could smudge this into perfection so you lose some of these pixelated waves here, but I'm not going to worry about it too much for the sake of time. Alright, after you're done blurring that edge, go back to File, go ahead and open the image called Playing Sax, um, once you have this image open, Go ahead and unlock your background again. Let's rename it playing sax. And then we will prepare it to copy and paste into our other image. So one of the first problems you'll see with this image is that the saxophone here is behind this little stand and we want to fix that so it looks like a full saxophone when we get it into our main image. The best way to do that is to come over here and select your clone stamp tool. How the clone stamp tool works is it basically takes one area of an, of an image and allows you to paint with that selection over other areas of the image. So in order to select the area that you want to copy you will hold option you'll see these little crosshairs show up, click on that area, and then you're good to paint. Again, that's an option, and then just click and drag as you would with, say, the paintbrush tool until this little stand is gone. Put that a 
little bit better. All right, that's good for the sake of our tutorial. Um, another problem you'll notice with the, st with the sacks, a good little learning opportunity is the red glare here. And you can get rid of that with your spot healing brush tool. Um, and as this little description says, what this does is remove marks and blemishes, so it's also good for removing, say, pimples from a face. If you basically just place your little tool over the glare, click, and it disappears. Alright, so now that we have our saxophone in the foreground, the next step is to adjust this image so it looks a bit crisper. Um, so instead of doing a duplicated image and playing with the blending modes as we did with the Red Rocks image, we're going to instead go up here to our adjustments. We're going to choose levels. Um, and this basically controls the highlights, midtones, and shadows of the image. And one easy way to make some quick cor corrections to your entire image is to pick one of these eyedroppers. Um, so the black one, you basically click on the darkest point of the image and make adjustments accordingly. You can see that. On the white one, you do the opposite. You pick the whitest point in the image and it will change the rest accordingly. Go back to my black. white point. Oh. Let's go right there probably. You can already see how much better that looks. I'm going to go ahead, right click on this layer and merge it down so I'm down to a single layer. And this sucker is ready to copy and paste. So the easiest way to do that is to grab your magic wand tool, um, and what this does is it finds hard edges between regions of the image and allows you to choose large sections that way. So I'm just going to go ahead, select all of Grizz just by clicking and dragging my tool around the image, zoom out. Grab the saxophone. All right. As you can see, there's a couple images or a couple areas of this image that I did not mean to select. So the way you undo that without completely deselecting your entire selection is to hold op Option and you should see a little uh, minus sign appear instead of the plus sign and then you can just click and subtract the regions that you didn't mean to select in the first place alright so once you have your selection the way that you want it um, there's two ways to copy and paste it over into your other image the first and the simplest way that you should probably get used to is by clicking Command C, which will copy, or you can come up here and go to Edit Copy. Clicking back over to your Red Rocks image and hitting Command V for Paste, or going Edit Paste. Perfect. So now that we have Grizz in this image, you'll notice right away that he is much too large. And the way to fix that. Well, actually, let's place it first so I can show you free transform. So basically, if you hit Control T, that'll open up your free transform. Or if you go to Edit Transform or Edit Free Transform, there it is. Um, and when you free transform them, it'll keep your ratios the same, but if you wanted, for some reason, to warp Grizz, you can hold shift and then change the bounding box to your liking. But I'm going to let go of shift and keep them at the same ratio. 
All right, once it looks good, you can either hit enter, or hit your little check up here. I'm gonna move it there. Rename this layer to playing sax, just out of good practice. And we are good. All right, after we have him pasted in and sized, the next step is to blend him in with the Red Rocks image. And the way to do that is to, again, go to your Blending Options tab here where it says Normal. Um, I really like the Linear Dodge Add for this one, but you can kind of play around with them and pick one that you prefer. Put them about there. All right, and now that we have Grizz playing his saxophone over the Red Rocks image, the next step is to put in some text. So you're gonna to wanna to come over here to your text tool, your horizontal type tool, pardon me. Click, and then you have two options. You can either click and drag to set the size of the text box, and then type from there. You can't actually see what I'm typing because the font's too big. Let's just delete that and try again. And, uh, go to text, click and drag. Change the font. There we go. Alright, I am going to keep this as Marriott Pro Bold, that'll work for our purposes, but if you wanted to change the font, it'd be over here in this drop down menu, same with uh, bold, italics, font size, um, kerning, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to type the word Grizz. Adjust this box so it surrounds the word. And that's a little small, so I'm going to go ahead and play with this font size a little bit. Oh, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because um, I forgot to show you guys. So, the other way, um, probably the preferable way to make a text box, instead of clicking and dragging, you can just click, and then you don't have to worry about the bounding size of the box. You can just type what you want, and the bounding box will automatically appear around it. So now, when I adjust the font size, it won't disappear because the bounding box will adjust with your adjustments. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this text to white for the next step. Color. All right, so now that we have our Grizz text, which I'm actually gonna make just a little bit smaller, let's go like 34. Well, there's a layer, 34, enter. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to make a drop shadow. And you'll basically just come over here, right click on your text layer, and go to blending options. Um. The other way to find that screen is to go to layer, layer style, and blending options, but it's definitely easier to just right click and find it up here. Um, this will give you a whole slew of options to let you modify your layer. We're going to go down to the drop shadow, and as you can kind of see it appear there, um, the size changes as you can see sort of how uh, it changes the distribution of the drop shadow so I like to put it down pretty low so it's nice and crisp and then the spread is what changes the actual size as you can see so looks pretty good to me we're gonna stick with that hit OK um, and now you'll notice when you move your grizz layer you'll move the drop shadow with it but say you want to edit only the drop shadow and not the text itself, 
and you will come up here back to layer layer style and you'll see the drop shadow selected you want to make sure it is selected if it's not selected already and you'll go create layer hit OK and now you can see the drop shadow is its own separate layer that we can click and manipulate so I'm just going to move it over here a little bit and adjust the fill so it's a little darker about right there alright so another useful um, blending mode I'd like to show you guys on your text um, or blending option Just come up here stroke and you can see that puts a stroke around the letters which I'm gonna put to 100% opacity then you can change the size as well as where the stroke appears. I'm gonna go inside. What does center look like? Go inside. Maybe take it down to about three. That looks fine to me. So I'm gonna hit OK. We're not gonna worry about isolating the stroke layer because why would we? Um, then the next step would be to place a galaxy background within the grizz text. So the way we're going to do this, instead of opening the image separately, we're going to go to File, Place Embedded, choose the red galaxy image, and click Place. Once it's on your image, just go ahead and place it over the text. The text will disappear, but that's fine because I'm going to have you make a clipping mask. So if you just right click on the red galaxy and hit create clipping mask, you will see that it appears behind your text. And now you can move it around accordingly. Um, so basically what a clipping mask does is it just takes the layer. Um, basically your new layer will only be applied to the layer that it is clipped to. So the galaxy image will only be applied to the grizz text when it is clipped to the grizz text instead of being that full image that we originally saw. Alright, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Um, and as you can see, this galaxy is a little, uh, it's a little too vibrant, it's a little off in saturation and hue compared to the rest of the image. So an easy way to fix that is to come over here, create another adjustment layer. We're going to go hue and saturation. Um, one thing that you'll see when I start playing with this is it changes the entire image and we don't want that. So again, what we're going to do is right click, create another clipping mask, and now when we change it, it'll only be affecting the galaxy image and therefore the grizz text. So I'm going to knock it down there a little bit, decrease the saturation, it's a little too purple, so we'll go back there, and that looks a little better to me, maybe we'll make it a little darker too. Alright, don't that, just click away, um, Alright, and the next step is to create our banner, which actually displays the information about the concert. So I'm going to go ahead and move him up. Click on, actually, this is a good learning opportunity. Um, so we're going to create a new layer, and you'll see that when you create a new layer, it will create the layer above the layer that you had selected. But in this case, we want this layer at the very top. So if you just click and drag, then you can reposition your layers. I'm going to put that at the top. Now with this layer selected, you're going to want to grab your rectangular marquee tool. And you can click and drag a selection. Once you have your selection, oh, I guess it won't move, let me move it around yet. Alright, we're going to paint it in first. So once you have an area selected, you will only be able to work on that area, essentially. So what we're going to do is grab our paintbrush over here. Um, 
up the size using your bracket, your right bracket to increase, left bracket to decrease. Um, and then to get a color that kind of matches the rocks, you can grab your eyedropper tool, which is right here, shortcut I. Then you can click here, and you can see up here that it's changing your color. This is a lot of work for me. I hit B, go back to my brush tool, and now I can color in this box. Um, if you color in your box and decide that you don't like it, you can come over here to your paint bucket tool. Usually it's hidden under your gradient tool. Um, so you can right click and select your paint bucket tool. And then you can grab a new color with your eyedropper, switch back to your paint bucket tool G, and change the whole area that way. So I'm going to go back to this original red. That looks pretty close to what I want. Um, to exit out of the marquee tool, you will just hit M again, or grab your marquee tool and click anywhere, and you'll see that bounding box disappears. Um, now that we have our bounding box, we can move it, and I'm going to center it using those smart guides. Yep, there we go. Actually, let's see. Yep, that's center. Move him over, down a little bit maybe. All right, and now that we have our box, um, we can turn the opacity of the layer down so that it blends in with the background a little better. I'm gonna say about right there is good. We can come back here to our text tool, create a bounding box, turn the size way down. go oh probably should change the text to black so we can actually see what's going on All right that's still way too big so I'm gonna go ahead change it to six say join us for geez a once time event. Go ahead and make that even smaller. All right. Just this. Center this sucker in our box. text tool so we can keep editing the text and I'm going to actually set it so that it centers um, which you should be used to adjustment from any uh, word processing program and then enter just give some basic uh, information so we can say red rocks July 4th bigger, say 9 p.m. Can we center this? Oh, yep, there we go. And then after that, we are about done. Um, the only other thing I want to show you guys is kind of a little trick to, that you can use at the end of any photo edit to kind of um, unify the composition. So what you want to do is come down here. Uh, this is where you can also grab adjustment layers. So all of these adjustments that I have up here in this window can also be selected down here with this little semi-circle, semi-filled in full circle, I should say. Um, and what you're going to look for is color lookup. And basically what that does is it adds an adjustment layer that is essentially a photo filter that you would see in a program like Instagram. Um, they're called LUTs in Photoshop, though I'd be lying if I said I knew what that stood for. Um, so you can just kind of click around, see these, 
how it changes the entire image and unifies it. Um, and if any of them uh, correct your image, change your image too much, you can go to the opacity and turn it down. And then you still get that filter, sort of that unified fill without the drastic um, color and contrast changes. So yeah, I think that's about it for our Fall 2019 photo workshop, Photoshop workshop <laughs> here in Studio Co. Made the same mistake twice in my intro and outro. Um, the only other thing would be to save your project. So when you want to save it, you can come up here, file, save as, name it whatever you want. Workshop final, lol. Um, and the default will be to save it as a Photoshop file, and the advantage to this is that when you save it as a Photoshop file, it will save all of your layers and adjustment layers, so if you want to come back and edit it later, then you will still have all of those layers. Um, if you were to save it in one of the common sharing formats, for example a JPEG or a PNG, um, then you'll still save the whole image but you won't save any of your layers or adjustment layers. It'll just be a single flattened image. Um, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and save it as a JPEG. Save. Can adjust the quality and whatnot here. We're just going to make it real low quality so it's a small file. And it shows you how large the file will be actually over here. So you can see it's more and more kilobytes the more I more or less I adjust it <clears throat> okay and it saves and we are good to go so yeah I think that about wraps things up thanks